Hey everyone, welcome to Technability, your source for no-nonsense tech all day every day. So what we have here today is a Galaxy Note 2, which everyone knows is not a new phone, but it's still a very, uh, very highly popular phone. And uh, what's unique about this Note 2 here, it's running 4.2.2 stock Android. Uh, the ROM would be Paranoid Android, it's the latest build. Uh, it's a beautiful ROM, it's got a ton of great features, which we're going to delve into uh, in a moment. But I just wanted to go ahead and let you guys know that if you do want to download this ROM, I will post a link below uh, to the XDA forum to where you can find it as well as instructions on how to root. I would post a how-to video for you guys but to be honest with you rooting this phone is pretty damn easy. Um, so if you are looking into it go ahead and ask me questions if you're confused about anything and I'll help you guys out in that regard. So let's go ahead and just look at a few things here on this Note 2. Uh, first thing first let me just go to the settings and show you guys how this is laid out. As you can see it's a tablet layout here. Uh, on the right side you have uh, whatever setting it is that you're under. So for example if I go to sound uh, you have all of the uh, various options right there on the right hand side. Same with display, storage, etc. Uh, now you may be asking yourself what features do you get with this specific build of stock Android? Not many, but that's the great thing about it. It's very simple. It's very minimal. Uh, it's stock Android. You're not going to get all the bells and whistles that you will get with TouchWiz, but in my personal opinion, I think that's a good thing. Uh, let me just go to About Phone here and show you guys right there, 4.2.2. Got those little little jelly beans. Um, again, it's Paranoid Android version 3.5.6. Uh, there might be a newer build out, but in any case, this is as stable as it gets. Uh, I've had no force closes, had no GPS issues. Everything locks in just fine. Wi-Fi is perfect. And as a matter of fact, the network on this has been quite fast. Uh, let me just go ahead and head to Engadget here for you guys, just show you what I mean. You can see how fast that loaded. Even though it's a mobile site, uh, let's go ahead and access the desktop site here. You could see, I mean, again, it's, it's loading the mobile site, but in any case, it's very fast. Uh, the network on this is specifically uh, built for stock Android, and with that said, you're probably not going to get LTE. It depends. There may be options to flash opposite, or excuse me, there may be options to fa uh, flash different radios that might get you LTE. It's something that I got to look into, but you can see on the top here, it has an H, which stands obviously for HSPA+, but in some cases, it says DC which um, I guess may, may or may not be LTE. I'm not too uh, certain about that, but it may be. But for the most part, if you're on an HSPA Plus network, you will get the 42 megabyte HSPA Plus that you get, for example, on the T-Mobile network. Uh, showing you guys the messages here, you can see it's stock Android. You get the stock keyboard, which is super duper responsive. Very responsive. Let me turn up the volume here so you guys can hear it. I love that clicking noise. <laughs> There's just something about that clicking noise that I really like. Uh, the responsiveness is great. Uh, everything is beautiful. The autocorrect is fantastic. Uh, the, it's the stock Android messaging app, which in my opinion is the best messaging app that you can get on Android. Uh, same with the camera, you get the stock camera. Now, here's the thing. When you flash this ROM, guys, keep this in mind, you're not gonna get all the touch with features with the camera. You're gonna get the stock camera, okay? And um, if you just hold down right here, oh, it's taking HDR pictures. You can flip over to the front-facing camera, as you can see right there. So the camera's functional, but it doesn't have all of the uh, bells and whistles that you get with TouchWiz. Now you can see right there, there's a DC. So that may or may not be LTE. Um, do I have speed test installed on this? Let's just go ahead and run a quick speed test, because I know how much you guys love speed test and benchmarks. So let's see here. All right, I'm going to do it while it's on DC. Okay. See what kind of speeds we get. DC, huh? DC Comics. Might as well say Marvel up there. It's a Superman phone. Okay, well, it's just solid. You know, five, look, here's the thing, guys. Now, you're looking at this and saying, oh, that's not crazy, LTE speeds. But l let me give you some, some um, worldly advice. First of all, we're in a, we're in a very close-knit area right now doing this video. And number two, it, anytime you have anything from 5 megabytes to, say, 10, you're really not going to notice much of a day-to-day -day difference in speeds, say, when you're web browsing or sending an MMS image or whatnot. Because if you're sending an MMS that's a megabyte, regardless of whether you have 10 megabytes uh, download or 5 megabytes download, it's going to send at the, about the same speed. Um, so with that said, you can see right here you have the app drawer, quick, very smooth, immediate response. You got the widgets tab. Obviously, you get all of the stock Android widgets, email, Google Keep, directions, contacts, contacts.
contacts, uh, etc. Uh, you got the first and quick settings. You got the first notification bar, and of course, you have the quick settings. Uh, you can access it in various different ways. It's customizable. Uh, as you can see, if I swipe down from the left, I get the regular notification uh, bar. If I swipe down to the right, I get the quick settings. Or I believe if I swipe down with two fingers, I get the quick settings. Or you can just click it here. Many ways to access it, which is great. One of the things that Android's done that separated itself from all the other operating systems throughout the years is really, really do a great job with this notification system that they have. The quick settings is something now that you see in iOS 7, for example. iOS 7 now has the, um, what do they call this? They call it the toggles toggles or something or another, quick toggles or whatnot. But in any case, iOS 7 has basically what Android has had for years. And um, it's, so it's definitely something that is um, obviously the marketplace is asking for, or else they wouldn't have put it in iOS 7. And it's something that Windows Phone is definitely in need of very soon. And I hope with 8.1, with the Windows Phone 8.1 update, that they utilize the notification center. Uh, again, uh, calendar, stock calendar, uh, everything is stock, bare bones, same thing you're going to get with stock Android or CM10. Uh, you got the maps, obviously. Um, same similar maps app. I mean, you could just see how fast this is just to utilize the speed here. If I end, end, enter and exit an app, it's pretty much immediate to my response. And then if I want to uh, multitask, I just hold down the home button and I double pressing. flip it all away. And then if I go back home, for example, and I double press, I get Google now. Navigate to Pasadena. Navigating to Pasadena. Set a reminder, 10 p.m., need to call John. Cancel reminder to call John. All right, didn't set the reminder, so it's not going to cancel it. But, um, you know, the gallery, obviously, is a stock gallery, so you're going to get the stock gallery. And the thing with the stock gallery is, if I go here to the camera and I click on one of the images, um, I can zoom, in, zoom out and I could basically swipe up if I don't want to delete it. Oops, went to the camera. I clicked on the camera icon there. I can always undo that uh, deletion. But in any case, it's um, a great ROM, great build. Uh, if you want to see what games look like running on it, we're going to run the original Angry Birds here. It's a classic, guys. And it's a T-Mobile version of the Note 10. All right, so. Let's go ahead and run the game here. That right there was uh, Varro, Varro who is our senior editor here at Technability. I'm going to be introducing him in a uh, video soon. You want to just say hi? Hi, Varro? how you doing guys? There you go. Yeah, he's going to be doing some videos as well as be, uh, being the senior editor for the website. So you can see Angry Birds runs super smooth and exiting it out is just as, just as quick. Benchmarks we have. You want to do benchmarks? Let's do benchmarks. All right, let's go to Quadrant here. See, the unique thing about us guys here at Technability, it's no-nonsense tech, man. We Absolutely. get to what you guys want to see, day-to-day, real-life use. Uh, we don't go through the bells and whistles and all the little nonsense and advertising and everything that comes with a lot of these tech reviewers that you see on YouTube. With us, with Technability, no-nonsense tech all day, every day. Uh, so let's go, run a, uh, let's go ahead and run a benchmark here on the quad-core 1 point, I believe it's 1.7 gigahertz quad-core Exynos processor, 2 gigs of RAM, expandable memory, expandable battery, 3,100 milliamp battery, which is super-duper great, guys. The battery life on this phone is fantastic. Um, you know, the Note 2 definitely gets a notch, is, is a notch above in battery life. You can see the phone. Of course, a lot of people know what the, the Note 2 looks like, but just to give you guys an idea of the build quality, uh, in my opinion, the build quality on the Note 2 is just as solid as you would get on the HTC One, and the reason I say that uh, is because it's sturdy and the backplate's removable, and there's multiple different backplates that you can purchase for this phone. So let's go ahead and push yes here. Let's see what kind of scores we get. 56.92, which let me tell you guys something. Uh, I've had a Nexus 4 quad core, I've had the S3 quad core, I've had the One X quad core, and they've all had lower scores than what you're getting here with the quad core Exynos on the Note 2. So 5692 is actually a really, really good score. Uh, I may not be up to par with, say, the One, which is a Snapdragon 600, or the S4, which is also a Snapdragon 600, but for the processor that it has, great score. Um, file manager comes with it. It's a great file manager. It's the CM10 file manager that you're going to get with the Paranoid Android ROM. Uh, obviously, everything else is pretty much stock. Bone stock, so you're not going to get any bloatware whatsoever, guys. That's really important. Of course, you've got the sharing options. You can pinch in, pinch out. You could share it uh, in many different ways, which is really cool. Again, something that they need to add to iOS is that sharing option from the notification center, which you don't get yet. 
And um, that's about it, guys. If you guys have any questions in relation to this ROM installation, uh, routing, etc., go ahead and ask me. Love the dialer. Love the you color scheme. You might want to mention in messaging when you pull down the menu, you can immediately respond from there as well. I'll go ahead and send a, a, text, a sample text here. Ah, oh, yes. That's a great point. Okay, go ahead and send a te uh, sample text there for Oral. Okay. And we'll go ahead there and showcase this. Okay, so you could see right there, uh, he just texted me, right? Bears Budani, that would be me. So it gives you options here to read, read, to, excuse me, to reply, read, and call. So if I put, uh, click reply right here, uh, basically a quick text pop-up comes up. And this is unique to Android and this is unique to stock Android, guys. Great feature, great feature. Again, not all the bells and whistles with the customization. Uh, with stock Android out of the box, you get a great experience. All right, guys, uh, I'm Berj Budanyan. You've watched Technability. Again, I'm here uh, with Varo Derbedrosian. I'm going to be introducing him soon in a separate video. Uh, he's going to be our senior editor for the website. And um, thank you guys for watching. And real quick, I want to just add a quick note to this video. Um, having the stock Android 4.22 installed on this particular device is, you know, far leaps and bounds better than the TouchWiz that Samsung's put into the phone. It's dramatically faster, performance is much better, and uh, I highly recommend it for Note 2 users. All right, thank you for that, Boro. Again, thank you guys for watching Technability. Have a safe week.